Hello everyone, this is Arpad Bolok from Sladio, and in today's video I'm going to show you a free tool that I've built for you that will change the way you write content. Okay, so let's jump straight into it. Before we get into the video and the tool, I'm going to tell you that I'm not actually a really good coder. I would uh, call myself a, a very beginner. I'm just learning Python uh, and you know, I'm building tools according to the documentations on the websites and using ChatGPT and GPT-4 playground, which, uh, you know, it's the output is so-so. So what I've, uh, you know, seen a lot on Twitter uh, is basically, you know, auto GPT, which, you know, if you haven't heard about, go check that out. It's basically a way to automate tasks using agents. Uh, agents meaning, you know, uh, basically open AI instances or large language model instances called as agents, which, you know, can perform uh, tasks task that you give them and then they can basically talk to each other and you know create tasks uh, and you know solve tasks according to that so there is a tool that can build agents for or you can use to build agents uh, which is Langchain and, and you can see here I'm going to read this up so Langchain is a framework for developing applications powered by language models um, you know so it's basically a very very easy framework to use uh, it has a lot of tools built in, uh, a lot of models, prompts, uh, it even has memory. There are a ton of videos uh, that you can see uh, on YouTube as well that it basically shows you how to build a, a chatbot, uh, how to build a, you know, uh, a Python script with Langchain that reads PDFs, uh, you know, so it's very easy to use. And what I wanted to build, first of all, is a tool that can browse the internet and get me facts. Because the main, you know, issue with GPT-4 and ChatGPT as well is, you know, the training data is based off out of, like, um, I know how many billion tokens, but it's only up until, like, two, 2021. So it's not really, and sometimes it's not really accurate. It's hallucinating details. So what I did manually before is, you know, I researched the facts myself uh, and then added those facts into my prompts and wrote uh, articles or anything, content, any content according to that. Now, I was thinking, like, how could, how could I automate this? Like, there must be, you know, a way. So I, I started, like, um, you know, checking around the internet, like, how to build, like, a chatbot that can browse the internet. And it's, like, hard as hell. <laughs> so it's... It's not, not not as easy as it seems, but then I found Langchain and, you know, how Langchain uses agents, basically. So what you need to know about Langchain is, you know, you have your agent which can use tools. So there are a bunch of tools like Google Search, Google Serper API. Uh, it can use Wolfram Alpha, which is very good for statistics, uh, you know, or any type of uh, mathematical calculations, I believe. Uh, you can use Bing search. And if you have access to Bing, uh, ChatGPT plugins, which unfortunately I don't, which would be really good, then you could use that as well. It can also use Wikipedia, which is, you know, great for getting facts and information. And a bunch of other tools like IFTTT, Webhooks. Uh, it can use you as a tool as well. So basically you give it a task and then it decides or give it a query and decides like, okay, what should I do next? And it, and it chooses out of the tools that you give it. Um, so uh, in a second, I'll show you the simple uh, tool that I built. But first I just wanted to let you know, like how can you build this yourself as well, maybe. Uh, and you'll see the the Python file. It's not, it's nothing, uh, you know, nothing extraordinary. But there's a uh, thing uh, called Langflow. Uh, I just made a copy. It's actually called Langflow. You can uh, you can see I also made a comment here that it doesn't really work right now that well. Um, so basically, Langflow is uh, Langchain with a with an interface, right? So a drag and drop interface. So it's very easy to create any type of tool with this uh, using the Langchain. Uh, uh, framework or directory so here are the, all of the tools which most of them don't work unfortunately but you know if i think if we give it a month or two it will be an awesome tool for anyone who doesn't need to code because all you need to do is just drag around and connect stuff which if you take a half an hour and an hour you'll learn so it's very very great to use and you don't have to code at all 
and it will give you like this uh, kind of a chatbot. Okay, so uh, so this is this is Langflow. Uh, you can use that as well. So basically, what I did is I used Langchain to connect uh, three tools. Basically, uh, it, it will connect to OpenAI, of course. It will go connect to uh, Google Search. Uh, using custom search engine and it will connect to Wolfram Alpha and it will connect also to uh, it's not three it's actually four <laughs> to Wikipedia because Wikipedia doesn't need an API key so uh, here's a tool I'll I'll put this into uh, the description there is a GPT 3.5 version and the GPT 4 version as well you know depending on what you have access to or what you have uh, you know, what you want to use because GPT-4 is of course a little bit more expensive and I like to use GPT-3.5. Now the downside of GPT-3.5 it is you know this tool isn't isn't perfect now let me tell you that <laughs> you know it often gives errors and I'm not sure if you can get, check the logs but I can and I can paste out uh, you know the information that it gives me but it gives errors because how it um, kind of interprets the commands from itself uh, and how it should output information as far as I could tell. So GPT 3.5 is a little bit uh, more stupid, so it often cannot really uh, you know, put out the information in the way it needs to, so it, give, it will give you error. So in that case, you don't need to rephrase your question and submit it again, uh, but it's extremely cheap. GPT 4, on the other hand, is a little bit more expensive, but it will give you better results. Um, so all you need to do really is first of all add your open API, open AI API, key, API key. I'm not going to show you how to do that right now. There's a ton of tutorials. Um, maybe I'll, I'll link link a tutorial in in, a, um, in in the description down below. Add your Google API key, uh, Google ser uh, custom search engine ID. I'll also put a video on there or maybe an article that you guys guys can check. Also, Wolfram Alpha app ID, uh, this is also free. So all of these are free. Of course, OpenAI API is uh, paid. Um, so why I said this is going to change how you write content is, you know, basically this complements GPT-4 Playground or ChatGPT that you use. So basically, let's say you want to write an article about, you know, which is the fastest dog uh, in the world and how fast does it run. Now, you could write this into ChatGPT. I didn't do it before. I'm not sure how accurate the information would be. Probably it has, uh, you know, uh, information maybe accurate on this, uh, but maybe, you know, some other topics that it doesn't, it wasn't trained on might not be that accurate. But I just, you know, quickly thought of this example. So you type in the input text, you click submit, and what happens, I'll show you the code is, you know, uh, the agent will think, okay, what should I do? Uh, and it will say, I should use a search query to find which breed of dog is the fastest. And it will use the action Google search. And then it will, you know, uh, basically search for the fastest dog breed in Google. Now, this tool doesn't go to the, you know, the individual uh, web pages and scrapes the content and, you know, summarizes them or, you know, splits them up and stores them in a big vector database or anything like that. Because first of all, that's very complicated and I didn't figure out yet. I'm in the process of doing that, but it's, it takes a little bit of time for me to understand. The second, it costs a lot, of more, a lot of more money because, you know, then you have to do embedding as well, which is additional tokens. So that's, you know, another level. This is just a, this is just a beginner rep but, that I made for you guys. Uh, so what it basically does is it looks at the meta descriptions uh, the snippets uh, in, in the SERP and, you know, finds the most relevant information according to that. Okay, so, uh, as you can see, it output the, the meta descriptions here, uh, then it thinks I should compare the results from the previous search to get a clear answer, and then what it does is it looks on Wikipedia, uh, and then, you know, in Wikipedia it searches for Greyhound and ob it observes the page Greyhound and gives you the summary of the page. Um, and here it says like 40 miles per hour, I'm not sure. But, you know, it it kind of looks at all of these details, which, you know, Greyhound film, <laughs> it might not be the best. Um, 
okay this is actually a previous uh previous input text this was the this was the current one so um i first searched like which is the fastest dog which which dog breed dog breed is the fastest then i uh, modified my search uh like you know which is the uh, fastest dog breed and how fast does it run or something like that uh okay and as you can see it does the same but it, it but here now it uses wolfram alpha as well and as you can see wolfram alpha, alpha wasn't able to answer it uh, unfortunately, then it does a Google search and it then s uh, shows fastest dog in the world and speed uh, according. So, so the really good thing here is that, you know, it takes your question and creates a query that it should put into Google search according, you know, like what query could give you the best results for that question. As you can see, it thinks uh, thought based on a Google search result, it seems like a great hunter, the fastest dog in the world with speed of 45 miles per hour and it thinks okay i know the final answer and the greyhound is the fastest dog in the world with a speed up to 45 miles per hour so what i was trying to do as well is um you know trying to write parts of the article or maybe sections of the article with this but it doesn't really work so right now so maybe that's in the future what i would like to do in the future as well is let this you know search for a query scrape the headings put them into a document and write a heading structure according to my prompt and you know the competitor headings as well uh but that's again the future but right now you know this this basically gives you the facts so you know before before you actually input anything to, into this uh, tool, what you need to do is go to ChatGPT. I'm not sure if you have like 3.5 or 4. Doesn't really matter. Probably give you the facts, and just ask uh, you know GPT-4. Tell me the list of facts I should research before writing this article. And I just gave it the Greyhound, the fastest dog in the world, uh, to make this uh, make to make sure this article is very detailed. Now it gave me gave me a list of facts that I should know before writing the article. And, you know, it might hallucinate or might actually know some of these, but what you can do is um, actually maybe you can convert, uh, ask ChatGPT to convert these into questions and then just go back and forth and back and forth and note all of the re real facts because this, these are real time facts according to Google. Uh, you know, some might be from the wrong website that might be not actually real, but you know, I think 99% of the times you'll get actual facts right now. What Google thinks is relevant too. So next, you know, here's my prompt that I use for, uh, for headings or, or structure creation. And here now you have, you, know, you see, I only have one fact added, but you can add like this huge list of facts. So it knows like it has context of your, uh, of your content, uh, you know, and as well, like, uh, you know, covers all the contextual layers inside the knowledge, knowledge domain. Okay, uh, or contextual domain, sorry. Uh, okay, these are for guidelines for the headings, and then, you know, I ask it to do the heading step by step. And I'm sorry, by the way, if this, if this video is long, but uh, I wanted to kind of explain to you guys uh, so the first step is create detailed structure course for the topic with headings and subheadings and the second step is to basically finalize improve the detailed structure using these instructions and I wanted to you know so how you usually get the best content out of GPT-4 playground is if you give it instructions like you're talking to a human because if you give it like uh, a structure like this it usually won't be that detailed, you know? It doesn't really have any uh, information that you, you need. So what you can do is what I did here. You know, first of all, any any heading or any question you, you have in the heading should be answered, you know, in the first sentence in, in a uh, natural language processing friendly format. Um, and then describe how, how to, you know, and just kind of going into details about the, the contextual layer or that kind of topic. And as you can see, it generated a basic outline and then it generated a much more, much better final uh, preferred structure. 
uh, and you know I, I hear it stopped uh, and I asked it con I asked it to continue and it actually continued and you can do it as long as you want but sometimes it will just repeat itself uh, and then what you need to do is don't use ChatGPT for content generation I don't think that's you know the best right now I mean if you have maybe uh, GPT-4 that's good but GPT-3.5 is not the best you should use the playground uh, you can get to that uh, if you log into your OpenAI account and then you click on playground up here sorry I have like a uh, super wide monitor so you might not see the the whole screen but basically all you need to do is once you're in the playground is take this uh, structure they generated put it into the system why I put it into the system because then I want to make sure that it doesn't forget uh, any of my headings because if you put into the you know the assistant or whatever what I noticed is after some time it actually forgets but if I put it into the system prompt which is basically the first thing that it tells then it will it, it won't forget and it will um, you know remember so then we have a, a kind of an assistant prompt here, which I'll I'll, I'll share in the I'll share in the comments below as well, and some general guidelines uh, about you know a few a few things that it needs to look out when creating the articles. For example, tone of voice, uh, the structure, the readability, HTML formatting, external links, of voice, smooth transitions, and a bunch of stuff like that. So the settings that I use, I'll put in into you know, uh, maybe a screenshot because my screen is too uh, wide. I can't show here. I'll put it into a video in a screenshot, maybe here or somewhere. Um, but basically temperature is one, maximum length is, is uh, 2048, basically maximum top P is one, uh, frequency penalty uh, and presence penalty is zero. I don't really touch those. Uh, I tried to touch those and you know, doesn't really matter that much and as you can see it came up with a really good uh, kind of informational article about the, the greyhound the fastest dog in the world with uh, the only fact that I added which was in the prompt uh, for uh, you know the the structure uh, and it actually gave me you know uh, like really good number like 45 miles per hour which is exactly what we researched so now think about it, if I researched all of these, speed, racing history, training exercise needs, temperament, health issues, and lifespan. Now, if I researched all of those and just add it into the facts, now you actually have content that is accurate and, uh, you know, has information, uh, you know, from the internet. So, you know, that's that's basically it. Uh, I'll, I'll put it into the, the description. I have a GPT-4 version and GPT-3.5 version. And again, if it throws you errors, <laughs> I I won't take any of the any of the blame. Uh, it's not perfect by any means, but it does the job. So if it shows you errors, just hit the submit again. Uh, it's completely free, by the way. I don't take any of your details. It's hosted on Hugging Face, so I don't see what you put into here. Uh, it's completely hosted on your computer. It doesn't even take your uh, API key. I think into history. So that's. That's it, guys. Uh, hope you liked it. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And if you would like to see more videos, subscribe and like the video. Subscribe to my newsletter, justslodio.com slash AI newsletter. Uh, I'll put it into the description as well. I'll be really, I'll be sending emails about the tools that I create, free tools, uh, sharing prompts and stuff like that. So make sure you sign up. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time and see you in the next video.